Welcome to Garden Wise Adventures. My name is Malie, and today we're going to talk a little bit about lawn care and about diagnosing issues. Now, this year's been a busy year for me, and I have not taken care of my lawn near the way that I have taken care of it in the past. Let me show you how to diagnose some of the issues because I've noticed some issues in my lawn. So now here is my lawn. One thing that has not happened this year as often as it should is I have only edged, this is mid-July, and I've only edged, oh, probably three times. And I usually am very good about edging it regularly. So it's been an issue. I, more grass is getting into the beds. And then if you notice, I don't know if you could see very well on the video, but it's starting to have kind of a yellow cast to it. So that's one thing I've got to diagnose. We've got some brown patches, some very definite brown patches. Let me show you one over here. We've got some brown patches here, and then one over here. Now let's look at the backyard a little bit. Backyard is a little bit better than the front yard, but it still is not as verdant green as it had been in the past. And we've got a few yellow spots on the lawn. So let's go talk about how I diagnose and what I figured out about my lawn. So the first thing I do when diagnosing lawn is I look at the maintenance history. Now with my lawn this year, um, that's very easy because I have been taking care of it. Now the yellow cast is very easy to diagnose for me because I have not fertilized it yet this year. Yes, that is not great. The last time I fertilized it was, I think it was mid-October last year, I put down a really good fertilizer. So as you can see, my lawn is not suffering too badly. So that fertilizer did really well. If you don't care about a deep verdant green, the most important fertilizer you can put down is in October, is the fall fertilizer, just before the lawn goes dormant. So it soaks up all of that nitrogen into the roots, stores it, and then is ready to use it next year. Now for fertilizing, I do not like to fertilize mine very heavily early in the spring, number one, because I don't like to mow that much. There are a lot of people who will start fertilizing in March or April and, and they'll start watering at that time. What you're doing is number one, wasting water. And number two, you're forcing your lawn out of dormancy really early. And you're avoiding, you know, the best time to develop drought tolerance. So the best way to handle it is wait to fertilize till probably the end of April and you know maybe just before a rainstorm so you don't have to turn on the irrigation and then let the lawn sit. You always have to water after you fertilize so you don't get burned but if you can get a little bit of water down then that's great and then wait to water again until the lawn lays down when you walk over it. That forces the roots to go down deep and do that at least twice before you turn on your regular irrigation. And don't turn on the regular irrigation until you absolutely have to. You really want to drought stress your lawn so you don't have shallow roots in the summer when it gets really hot. Because when it gets really hot in the summer, where's the place that dries out first? That top few inches of soil. And if that's the only place where your roots are, they will continuously dry out. And so you're gonna to have to water more. But if you have roots that are deep enough that they stay in the more moist soil, you won't have to water as much. So fertilizer, that is one issue. You know, if you get that yellow cast over your lawn, look at when the last time the fertilizer went down was and how much they put down. Okay, the second thing I look at is how often do you mow and how much do you take off? My son is doing the mowing, I'm doing the edging. The mowing, you know, we've ended up skipping a couple of weeks, you know, here and there. And that could be another part of the problem. It really stresses the lawn to take off more than a third of the length. So you should be mowing regularly. So that's probably another issue that my lawn is having. Now, the most important issue to look at is watering. But first, I'm going to look at these brown spots and see if it's watering or something else. So let's show you how I do that. So I went and got my handy probe. If you don't have a probe like I do that has a window, you can actually use a long screwdriver to do this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how wet it is, you know, how deep the, the soil is and how deep my roots are. So let me show you how I do that. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to take, you know, a sample where it is brown. And this takes a little work sometimes. 
And if you have a screwdriver, since you're not pulling, pulling the soil out, you can just see how deep that screwdriver goes. Okay, I actually hit a rock, so it couldn't go any deeper. But here, you can see the sample. Now, I switched up my irrigation yesterday. You know, I've, I found an issue, but I switched it up. And so it is moist now. It was not moist before. But is another thing you can see is I have some interesting layers. Now, soil layers can cause issues. If you have a coarser layer below a more compact layer, then you're going to get drainage issues. But that's not the issue with my lawn. Um, I'll show you what the issue was a little bit later. But we're going to look and see how deep my roots are. And in this area, they are not deep at all. So I am probably watering too much you know, on, re on a regular basis. Or, let me see if there's roots in this area. Well, there's a few roots, but not, they're not very deep. I would love to have my grass roots eight inches deep. Let me go see if I could find an area where the grass roots are deeper. Okay, up on the top part of my lawn, there's just a few roots down here, but you can see, I don't know if you can see those roots. It's about four inches before we hit rock, and that is really what my soil is like. Underneath the sand, which is topsoil that the previous owner put down, and then, you know, the organic layer, which I think is just from the grass, it's almost pure rock. So it makes it really kind of difficult for the roots to go much deeper. So we look at the watering, we look at the soil, and then I'm going to show you one other thing that we're going to look at before I tell you what the problem actually was. Now we need to make sure I'm not having a pest issue. You know, I want to make sure that this isn't grubs in the lawn. I'm going to link up at the top of the video, a, a video that Grow How did, where he shows a prime example of what grubs look like and what the damage looks like in the lawn. So you can watch that. But one thing that you do to make sure it isn't grubs is you try to pull and see if the grass is holding tightly. All of this grass is holding really tightly. I mean, if it's really, really dead, you probably will pull out some grass, but because this is holding so tightly, you know, this area here, you know, it's been dead for a lot longer, but, you know, I don't think that's grubs. Because this is holding tightly, I am pretty positive this is not grub damage. So the last thing I did, which is really actually the first thing I should have done, is turned on this irrigation. Let's turn on the irrigation and show you what's happening. So we have the irrigation on. And I did this diagnosis a little bit earlier, so I know exactly what's going on and I've started some of the remediation. But as you look at these irrigation heads, they're really low. And my, the skirts of my tree had grown down really long and it couldn't spray under the tree. So it was blocking some of the irrigation there. This head is turning appropriately. All the other heads up there are turning appropriately. But if you look at this head right here, it is not turning. It's just stuck in that one position. Now I turned it a little bit earlier. I turned it yesterday when I figured that out so that it would cover the dry spot and that's why it has some moisture to it. And then the other thing I noticed was this head that is turning right now was not turning yesterday. So I think it is intermittent that it turns. It's brand new, I replaced it last year. So we had two problems. We had that head not turning and we had this head not turning. So that caused that dry spot right there. Now, if you look over here, there's another dry spot between these plants. Now this is poor design on my part. Um, there's two sprinklers that hit that spot, but not a third. And because of that, it's not getting, actu it's actually not getting enough water. So this spot is another dry spot. Now, trying to get grass watered appropriately, all the water that I have to put on it, all the fertilizing is not my favorite thing in the world. You know, I don't like to put down the chemicals for the weeds, but I do it because I care for my neighbors, and I'll link another video at the top that talks a little bit more about chemicals. Um, 
because of all of that is not my favorite thing, this grass is going to be removed in a year or two. So I won't have to worry about all of this and figuring out what the problem is. So now that I know what the issue is with my lawn, what I'm going to do today is, or tonight, is I'm going to put down a little bit of fertilizer. I'm going to change out the, sprin the sprinkler that's not turning with this new head that I bought. And I go edge it so that it looks better and look forward to the day where the lawn is gone when I don't have to do the maintenance tasks that I don't like as much. Now I know there are those of you out there who love your lawns and love taking care of them. And if you do and you're having issues with it, remember to go out and look at the watering first, look for bugs, look at your maintenance history and see if it's being maintained on a regular basis and see if you can diagnose what's going on. And I hope you enjoy yourself this week. I'm going to link above some videos that I've done on changing out irrigation heads. So I'm not going to show you how I do that today. And I hope you have a wonderful garden adventure. <music>